iPadOS 26 is almost here, and I've been rocking the beta version of it on my M4 iPad Pro since it was announced about 10 days ago at WWDC 2025. And even though it's only been about a week and a half of using it, I honestly feel like this is the first iPadOS improvement in a super long time that actually makes it feel like you're using a pro device. There's a ton of new stuff in iPadOS 26, but these are the five that I think will be the biggest game changers and really take iPadOS to the next level. First is the improved window management experience. You can now use your apps on your iPad in a way much more similar to what you'd experience with macOS. You can move, resize, minimize, and tile your windows in the same way you can on your Mac. And you do so using the new close, minimize, and maximize buttons in the top left-hand corner of your iPad apps. And yeah, it looks literally exactly the same as on macOS and works exactly the same as well. This makes multitasking or switching between apps so much faster and so much more fluid. And you can now arrange apps on your quote unquote iPad desktop like you could on a desktop, giving you way more control over your workflow. Apple's also added menu bars to every app. Again, exactly like macOS. These are things that people never thought Apple would do on the iPad. So this means you can access key settings for the apps or open up the search bar in a document or quickly flip through your browser history without having to tap on the screen. The list goes on. All these changes just make managing your apps and window experience and working with all your different apps so much quicker and easier to do. I honestly think the new windowing experience is the biggest improvement overall in iPadOS 26. But another huge improvement for people who use their iPads for major workflows, say video or photos or audio for that matter, is background tasks. So now if you are using Safari to download a large file off of Dropbox, but you wanna keep typing in notes, just flip over to your notes app and the download will continue in the background. Again, just like on a Mac. For me, I do a lot of short video editing for YouTube and TikTok using my iPad Pro. So now when I'm rendering those files from Final Cut for iPad, I can switch over and do something else. Whatever it needs to be, I can do both at the same time. I don't know why this wasn't built in before, but it's super clutch that it's here now. Keeping with the theme of improvements that are very macOS-like are the improvements to file management using the Files app. iPadOS 26 completely overhauls the file management experience, making it so much better and intuitive than before. So now you can customize folders just like you would on macOS, including changing the color or adding icons so you can quickly distinguish between them. You can now also drag folders into your iPad dock so you can quickly access high use directories such as your downloads folder. And last but not least is the improvement to the open with setting for files. Before, when you opened a file, you used to have to tap on the application you wanted to use to open it. No more, now you can set it once and forget it and it will always use that app to open the file type of your choosing, just like on macOS. And one major thing carried over from macOS to this version of iPadOS is preview. Now there is finally a dedicated first party PDF editing and viewing tool built in to iPadOS. No more need for those stupid third party applications. You can do it all out of the box using preview and all the tools that you would expect to be here, such as markup and highlight and annotation are all here as well. It works super well. It's very quick to use and it's compatible with the Apple Pencil if you have one for markup and drawing. It couldn't be any better than this. And lastly, iPadOS 26 brings some pretty significant improvements to people who use their iPads for podcasting or a lot of video calls, and they wanna be able to do more with that capability. With the new local capture tool in iPadOS 26, you can finally record your local audio and video feeds when you're doing a Zoom or FaceTime call or recording a podcast, so you always have a clean copy of your feed at the end of your recording with no external peripherals or software required. You can also now switch between multiple audio sources, which is great because I actually used to use my iPad exclusively to record content and my audio feeds for my videos using an external mic. So now if people do the same thing on their end, again, for podcasting or video production, you have a lot more control and capability when doing so. Again, these are just some of the major improvements on iPadOS 26. I've barely scratched the surface. This is such a big changeover, but it's really great to see Apple finally taking things in a step in the right direction towards making iPadOS pro-grade, prosumer, especially for people like me who bought the M4 iPad Pro expecting something like this to drop last year. We were let down pretty hard, but it's finally coming. The iPad will finally get that prosumer touch 
be more and more capable than ever. This is really great. Super happy to see Apple taking this in the right direction. And I think it's a major improvement that's really gonna change the game for iPad users. But as always, what do you guys think? Let's have a conversation down in the comments below. Do you love this iPad OS improvement? Do you hate it? Are you testing the beta like me? Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you guys again soon in the next one.